Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, Y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So in today's video, we have a, another very interesting story time. I'm actually quite excited to do this one. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who Pierce Morgan is. He did the interview with Pierce. I will leave that video linked down in the description box. You guys, if you have not watched that, you need to watch it. It is so, so, so good. Well, he also interviewed today's story topic lady, story topic lady, <laughs> Sheila Davalio. Have y'all heard about Sheila Davalio? Super, super intelligent woman, like graduated with her master's, family was super intelligent, and she did some pretty wild things. So if you guys have not heard this story, you are in for a treat. Now, before we go any further and before we start, I do want to let you guys know that everything is in this video is going to be alleged at this point because she is in prison and she is trying to go back to trial again, and she is claiming her innocence. She has maintained her innocence this whole entire time. Also, Pierce Morgan, when he interviewed Sheila, he said that she was the most terrifying woman that he has ever sat down with. Why did he say that? I'm gonna tell you guys. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Thank you so much, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. If you guys don't know what a VPN is, it is a virtual private network, and let me tell you why you should be using ExpressVPN. When you're out in public and your device connects to a public Wi-Fi, your device is actually sending your data out, and there are people out there watching, trying to get your data, and there are hackers out there trying to snoop into your personal data. Express VPN will create a tunnel between your information and the Wi-Fi to keep people from hacking and getting your data. But let's just talk about my personal favorite way to use Express VPN. Express VPN will also help you to unlock different shows in different countries like my personal favorite is Netflix. And because I use Express VPN, I can watch shows that are on Netflix in different countries that are not available here in the US for me. Let me show you how easy it is to use. So as you can see, if I go to Netflix here, there's a show that I want to watch that is Confessions of a, of a Serial Killer. As you guys can see, it's not available. But when I go over to ExpressVPN and just go to the UK, now that it's connected to the UK, There it is, it pops right up. And now I can watch Confessions of a Serial Killer with Piers Morgan. It is that easy. Just go to expressvpn.com forward slash Christina Randall and find out how you can get three months free off of ExpressVPN today. All right, back to the video. So let's just start at the beginning. Sheila Devalio was born in 1969 in Charlottesville, Virginia. When she was two years old, her and her family moved back to Iran and that's where they were from. And while living there when she was only 10 years old is when the revolution started. She stayed there for I think seven more years during the revolution and her and her family fled back to the US and moved to New York when she was 17. Sheila finished high school and continued to grow up there in the suburbs of New York. Both of her parents 
practice medicine. So, I mean, her parents were very, very smart as well, too. She never really wanted for anything. They had quite a bit of money, and according to Sheila, she had a great childhood. Sheila grew up wanting to be a scientist. She did very well in school. She excelled in everything that she did academically. She graduated and got her bachelor's degree and then went on to get her master's in public health. So she was kind of following in her parents' footsteps at this point. However, when she was 19 years old, she did get married and according to her, it was an arranged marriage with her family. When Sheila was in grad school, she met a man named Paul. Paul was born in 1967, so they were very close in age and the two started dating. So Sheila is now dating Paul while they are in grad school. However, Sheila is actually married to her husband that was the arranged marriage when she was 19. Now, Paul did not know that she was married at all, okay? Things progressed quickly between the two of them, and she really started to care about Paul. Now, they dated for years, okay? They dated for years. And in 1999, her husband filed for a divorce against Sheila. And this was a really big deal in their family. And Sheila's family and in their traditions and stuff that they believed in in their home, you did not get divorced for any reason. Divorce was absolutely out of the question. So when Sheila got divorced from her husband, even though he is the one that filed, even though she was having an affair, her whole family shamed her. I mean, they still talked to her and loved her, but she was then shameful in their family. It is said that the way that her husband found out that she was having an affair is he found some stuff in her phone. He got Paul's phone number, asked Paul to meet him for coffee. So now her husband and her, what would you call it? It's not a mistress if it's not a woman. What would you call it? Like back the side piece, for lack of a better term. Anyways, her husband and her boyfriend that she is dating for years at this point, meet for coffee, they talk, and then he files for a divorce in 1999. In 2000, she marries Paul. Okay, so now Sheila is married to Paul, and at this time, her and Paul had actually been dating for eight years. Okay, so this is a long relationship, a long affair. Paul loved her, and Paul was known as like very quiet, kind type of guy, and she was shy and kind of awkward, but very, very smart and a go-getter. So now they have been together for eight years and they are married and they are working very busy jobs. They're both doing different things in the medical field and they are not seeing each other very much. At this point, Sheila is working at a company called Purdue Pharma and they are just super busy. They are in their careers and they're seeing each other in passing. And according to Sheila, this is when they started to grow apart themselves. Now, six months after Sheila started this job at Purdue, which was actually in 2000, this guy named Nelson joins the company as well. And now Nelson and Sheila are working together and they are doing a lot of things together, okay? They have a lot of projects together and they start to become closer together themselves. Sheila described Nelson as outgoing, funny, that they just hit it off right off the bat. She would also later say that Nelson pursued her and she had never been pursued before by any man. This is what she said. Obviously she had been because she'd have been married twice at this point. Somebody was doing some pursuing. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, she said she had never been pursued before like she had been with Nelson and she just couldn't help it. She just started to have this connection with Nelson. So in 2001, Sheila started telling her husband that her brother, who she said was diagnosed with schizophrenia, was going to come and visit. Now, Sheila said that her brother, who was diagnosed with schizophrenia or had schizophrenia, had a lot of outbursts. Now, allegedly, Paul, her husband, knew this from the beginning, that she had this brother that had schizophrenia and did not know she was married. Did not know she was married to her first husband. Did not know she was married to now Paul because he had these outbursts. And if he knew that she was married, when he saw her, he would just like kind of flip out and have outbursts and be uncontrollable and all of that. So he, she's telling Paul that he's going to come and visit her and that he needs to leave the house and he also needs to either take all of his stuff with him or they need to hide it because if her brother sees any male stuff there he's going to know she's in a relationship or she's married and he's going to completely you know have a fit and it's just going to be really really bad and so Paul obviously the very 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 nice and understanding very understanding man that he is. I mean, I feel like I would be understanding with that at first too, 
but bear with me, you guys. He, he agrees to it. So this starts happening in 2001, right? So he goes and stays with his family. Now, Sheila's brother starts to come and visit a lot more often. It would either be for one day at a time, it would be for three days at a time, a long weekend, and she would be like, hey, uh, my brother's coming to visit. Can you like take all of your stuff and disappear? And it was happening more and more often all the way until 2003, so for two years. And at this point, Paul's getting a little frustrated. He's like, hold up now. I'm moving out of my house basically every other week or a few times a month or every other month or however often it was for two years so your brother can come and visit. Like at some point, you either got to break the news to him, ma'am, or something's got to give here. Like I could just imagine, right? Like, okay, I've, I've been understanding, but don't get crazy. What was actually happening, if you guys did not pick up on this, was the guy Nelson that she was now seeing at work was coming to her house and staying. It was never her brother, okay? So she was very ballsy in her affair. Like she had this man up in her house. <laughs> Lord. And at this time, Nelson has no idea that she is married. So now let me just bring it back to you guys so you guys don't lose me here. Sheila gets married at 19 to her first husband. She starts having an affair with Paul. She has an affair with Paul for eight years her husband divorces her. She marries Paul. She marries Paul in 2000. And in 2000, she starts an affair with Nelson. Okay. Now she's having an affair with Nelson for two years while married to Paul. I mean, girlfriend was busy. Okay. Girlfriend had a lot going on, honey. She was, I don't know how she was keeping it together. I can barely handle one man. He gets on my nerves. Okay. I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> I love him, but Two, three, I can't. That's too many. Now, right around this time, at their job, because you know, Nelson and Sheila work together, a woman starts working there named Annalise. Now, Annalise was beautiful, okay? Gorgeous, super funny. I mean, she had her master's degree as well. She graduated from Harvard. Yeah, Harvard, and then went on to Columbia to get her master's degree. Both of her parents were doctors. I mean, she she had it go went on. She was known to be very, very, very kind, nice to everybody, super outgoing, big smile, lots of friends, really close with her family, and just a really good girl. And so you can imagine when Nelson met her, Nelson had no real ties to Sheila, although he was dating her for two years and sleeping with her and going and staying at her house and the whole nine yards. When he met Annalisa, he just fell for her. And so he cut off things with Sheila. And Sheila did not take this too well, okay? Not at all. She actually started to stalk Nelson. And by stalk him, she would do things like hack into his calendar online and find out where he was going. Nelson would be on a plane trip to go to a work adventure or whatever. And the next thing you know, Sheila would pop up in the seat next to him on his trip home and go, oh my gosh, you're on the same flight as me? You guys, could you imagine? She would also do things like talk about him to her husband, but in like third party. So later on, Sheila's husband would testify and say that she would come home whenever they were staying together and tell him about this love triangle of these people at work, okay? And it was three people. One's name was Annalisa, the male was Jack, and then Melissa, who Sheila said was her friend. I know this is so many names. I hope you guys are keeping up with this because this is wild. Sheila would be telling her husband about her friend, Melissa, who was just in love with this guy, Jack, but Jack was messing with Annalisa and Melissa and like ask him his advice to give to her friend when really the advice was for her. And then she would start telling her husband, Paul, that she was going to go with her friend to like night stalk him. And Paul being the very understanding husband that he was, gave her a pair of night vision goggles gave her a device where she could listen in through like phone calls, all of this hot, crazy mess, which why Paul had all those things, I don't know. Maybe he was just into spy gear. Who knows? But he has done given his wife, okay, some night vision goggles so she can go and stalk her lover, which he doesn't know it's her lover at this time. Like, So now she's sitting outside of his place 
peeking in the windows, stalking him, planting things in his office so she can listen to all of his phone calls and all the things that he's doing, hacking into his calendar, getting on the same airplane that he's on and just like completely stalking him and this woman. When things really took a dangerous, drastic turn was on November 8th of 2002. On that morning of November 8th, Nelson, who had been staying with Annalisa a lot at this time. Now, remember how I told you Annalisa had her stuff together. She had a gorgeous two bedroom condo on a waterfront property. She had like the nicest cars, the nicest house. Amazing. And Nelson had been staying with her a lot at this point because they had actually gotten engaged and were planning on, you know, being married and settling down and spending their lives together. Nelson gets up that morning at eight o'clock like he typically does and he went off to work. And on that day, Annalisa was planning on working from home like she typically would on that day of the week. He goes to work, she's working from home, and at 12, 19 p.m. on November 8th, 911 gets a phone call. And this is the phone call right here. Answer please. Hello, a, a guy has attacked my neighbor. Think someone attacked your neighbor? It was an anonymous phone call that came in from a payphone saying that their neighbor was being attacked by a man, an emphasis on a man. The cops go, they show up to Annalisa's condo, they go to reach for the door, they open the door, and the door just comes open, okay? When they walk in, they see mess everywhere. Things are turned over, plants are turned over, there's blood, and they see Annalisa laying right there in the foyer, and she is already dead. She had been beaten, she had a really significant head injury, and they also saw that there was like a 20-pound a dumbbell, and it had blood on it, so they figure that she had been hidden in the head with that and she had also been stabbed around 20 times I mean there was blood everywhere there was broken glass it was a fight and Annalisa was known to be somebody that was very active she worked out and so they knew right then and there that whoever came in that house to stab her and kill her you know they had to fight her she wasn't going to go down easy when Nelson drove up later that evening after he'd gotten off work, he had plans to take Annalisa to dinner. Well, when he pulled up, the investigator stopped him. And when they started to question him and they found out like, okay, this is her fiance, they let him know that she had been killed. And right then and there, they said that Nelson was acting very strange. He never asked them like how she was murdered. He never asked the investigators any details. I mean, they were expecting him to, you know, push past them, try to run in and, you know, like, oh my gosh, let me see her. But none of that. He was just hung his head down and just said, okay. Well, they said, well, you need to stay here for questioning. So they had him go over to the boathouse. Now, when he went over to the boathouse, investigators would later say that when they went there to talk to him a couple times, they had to wake him up. So not only was this man not crying that his fiance that he loved and planned on marrying, he wasn't crying, he wasn't upset, he wasn't asking any questions, he was taking a nap. And they were like, okay, this guy is definitely a suspect. And they just figured automatically that he probably did it. I mean, they always question the person that's closest to you anyways, but the way that he was acting, they just, they knew that he was on their radar at this point. Rumors at work about Nelson started swirling around. Rumors with Annalisa's family, you know, and Nelson being a suspect and just everybody was looking at Nelson like he did it. Now, Nelson started feeling very isolated and very alone, but he had one friend who just happened to want to be there for him. And that was Sheila. So now Sheila was coming to his rescue, coming to his aid, talking to him, being that shoulder for him to, you know, lean on and depend on. And he would later say that he felt like Sheila was the only one that would listen to him and, and was really there for him. As a matter of fact, she started like planning dinners for them to go to. And before you know it, they were sleeping together again. He also said that at one point she invited him to go to a group ski trip. But once they got there to the resort to go skiing, the only people that showed up was Sheila and Nelson. So... Things were really weird. They continued to mess around for the next six months until March 23rd of 2003. 
March 23rd of 2003, Sheila was at home and her husband Paul came home. Sheila starts telling her husband Paul that she wanted to play this game that her co-workers had been talking about at work, so she wanted to play with him. And Paul was down for just about anything because he felt like their marriage was falling apart. I mean, she was growing distant. Her brother had been coming over all the time at this point and he's having to leave. And, you know, they were just obviously growing apart and he loved his wife. He wanted to do whatever he could to make it work. So Sheila says, the way that we play this game is I'm going to blindfold you and you're going to blindfold me. We're going to take turns. We're going to handcuff each other and we're going to go around the house and find different items, put it on our skin or put it on your skin and you have to guess what it is. And so it did sound kind of like an interesting game, right? So Sheila tells Paul to go first. So Paul blindfolds her and handcuffs her. He, he comes up, he puts a pencil on her. He puts a, you know, a, a blanket on her and she has to guess what the items are. And when they're done, she blindfolds Paul. So she blindfolds Paul and she handcuffs him to a chair. She brings one item up. She puts it on his chest. He guesses what it is. Like he's feeling like this is so sexy. The next thing you know, she, he was on the floor, handcuffed to that chair and blindfolded and she straddles him. He said he felt a really heavy feeling in his chest. And what it was, was she had a knife and she stabbed him in the chest. And he didn't really know what it was. It was like a, a, a lot of pressure. And then she stabbed him again. When she stabbed him the second time, Paul started screaming. He was like, get off of me. Take this blindfold off. Uh, take the handcuffs off. When he started yelling that, Sheila started saying that she could not find the handcuffs keys. She's like, I can't find the handcuff keys. I can't find the handcuff keys. And he was like, you know, take the blindfold off. Take the blindfold off. When she took the blindfold off of him, Paul looked down and he saw his whole entire clothing items that he had on him were covered in blood. And so he started freaking out like, call 911, call 911. She said, okay. She took the phone. She walked out of the room. She came back in the room and she said, okay, I called 911. The ambulance is on their way. So Paul is laying there handcuffed, bleeding, and 30 minutes goes by and no ambulance shows up. At this point, he is weak. He is bleeding out and he is like, Call it, call the, call 911 again, call them again. She calls back again and she tells Paul that they said that they're very, very busy, but that they're sending somebody. So Paul starts begging her, like, take me to the emergency room, take me to the hospital. Eventually, she finds the handcuff key, she gets the handcuffs off of him, she puts him in the car to take him to the hospital. <sighs> she takes him to the hospital. And he is weak, like he is falling out, like he is, he's bleeding, right? He's been stabbed in the chest twice. She's telling him like, I'm so sorry, it was an accident, I don't know what happened. She gets him to the hospital and instead of driving to the like ER, where you drive to the ER, she drives to a secluded parking lot in the back. She opens up the car door and she stabs him again in the chest for the third time. At this point, Paul is screaming. She's trying to kill me. She's trying to kill me. Up until that point, he thought that it was all an accident until that third stab. When he started yelling that, there was actually people that were outside that heard him. They ran over to the car and they had called 911. She got him out of the car and she hauled butt. She left. Now, this is so weird, you guys. She leaves. Now, they're trying to get the, the employees, the uh, medics and all that over to him. He's been stabbed three times at this point. And the third time that she stabbed him, she actually stabbed him and nicked him in the heart. So, I mean... He has been stabbed at the heart at this point. He had been bleeding for God knows how long, and he is in and out of consciousness. She drives off, and then she drives back to the hospital. He is still outside. The medical workers are out there, and she starts trying to get him to get back in the car. The medical workers are like, no, 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 no. You're not getting in this car. You're not like, he's got to go into the hospital. They get him into the hospital. She flees the scene again. And he starts telling them what happened before he goes into surgery. And the next thing you know, he goes into surgery and he is like having, you know, heart surgeries, being sewn up. And he, they don't know if he's going to make it at this point. The cops go and they go to look for his wife, Sheila. They find her at the house. 
they take her in for questioning. When they take her in for questioning, they tell Sheila that he's not going to make it. They don't think he's going to make it. What happened to him? Sheila starts telling the investigators that he came in from work and he had already been stabbed and she took him to the hospital. The investigators knew the whole time that he was going to live and they knew the story. They just wanted to see if she was going to lie or not. And she did. So after they got a full lie story out of Sheila, then they told her, you know what? We were just tricking you. He is alive. He is going to live. And he told us what happened. Now you tell us the truth. Then she completely switched her story up and said that, you know, it was an accident. I had the knife. I was putting it on his chest. He leaned into me. And every time he leaned into me, he was scared and like... This whole entire thing, well, they arrested her right then and there for assault with a deadly weapon. So now Sheila is in jail and she's arrested for assault and the investigators, they go back to talk to Paul at the hospital. When they talk to Paul at the hospital, Paul starts telling them the whole entire story at this point. He said she was supposed to call 911. The ambulance didn't come and, you know, it was too busy. And the investigators are like, this doesn't sound right. So they take her phone. When they take Sheila's phone, they see that there is a phone call during that time and none of it is to 911. She never called 911. Guess who she was talking to? She was talking to Nelson. She was planning dinner with Nelson later that evening. So they're like, what? So they call that number. They find that it's a coworker named Nelson and they call him in for questioning. When they call Nelson in for questioning, they let him know that Sheila has been arrested for stabbing her husband and Nelson is shocked. He did not know that she was married. So he's like, what? She's married? So now they're realizing, okay, now he's having an affair with her to her husband and they're trying to make it all make sense. Like, did she try to kill her husband because she's having an affair with this guy? Like, what is going on there? The more that they question Nelson, Nelson tells the police that he had been dating her and in 2002, he broke it off with her in order to be with Annalisa and that she did not take it well at all whenever he started dating Annalisa and that she was kind of freaking out and all that, but that Annalisa had been murdered and stabbed to death and that whenever Annalisa's you know murder took place, Sheila was there to console him and be there for him. And that's how they started talking again. So now the cops are like, wait a minute. Well, who killed Annalisa? And he's like, well, it's, it's unknown. Long story short from this point, it had been six months since Annalisa had been murdered and they had no leads at this point. I mean, the case wasn't closed, but they... They had no idea who it would be, right? They did find some DNA that was in the bathroom that did not match Nelson's or Annalisa's, but they ran it through the database and they had no match. Well, when she was arrested for stabbing her husband, they ran her DNA through the database and then it matched. So her DNA was found in the bathroom of Annalisa's. Sheila would later take both of the cases to trial. Now, she took the case with her husband to trial and they offered her five years. She denied it because she said, I would never admit to uh, trying to hurt my husband. I love my husband. She denied the five-year uh, plea deal and she got found guilty and she got 25 years. Like, whoo. When I hear those kind of cases, like that makes me so thankful that I took my plea deal. And you guys know the story. If you don't know the story, I got sentenced to three years in prison. Da, 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 da. The videos are linked down below, but makes me so glad that I took my plea deal. Nevertheless, so she got 25 years for that. She was in prison for six years when she got brought back and got tried for the Annalisa situation. Now, when she went to court for the Annalisa murder, she decided that she was going to represent herself. And this is the part where it's like, they say that she thinks she is smarter than everybody, which clearly she's not when you guys hear this story and hear about all the stuff she does. Like, girl, what really were you doing? I mean... Anyways, she represented herself, she got found guilty, and she got sentenced to 50 years consecutive to the 25 years. So right now she's sentenced to 75 years in prison, and she is still maintaining her innocence on both of the cases and still plans on taking it back. I think she's got like two or three more appeals or something like that that she can do. Now, when you watch the interviews with her, and one of them that I watched was her on Netflix on, I think it's Killer Women, and then... And there's a couple like little 
little bits and pieces of it here on YouTube. I will leave them linked down below. The reason why Pierce Morgan says that she is the most terrifying woman that you've ever sat down with is because she is so cool, calm, and collected. Like she seems like a normal person who may not have done this, although she did allegedly, right? And that he thought it was just so scary how she could like murder this woman and then be completely normal, go back to work, console, you know, her lover at this time, and then plan on killing her husband. And everybody thinks that, because I'm, because I was going, if she was actually planning on killing her husband, why did she do it like that? Why didn't, and this is what her defense is. Why didn't I just kill him? Why didn't I just stab him and kill him if I wanted to kill him? Why would I do it like that? Why would I take him to the hospital? And a lot of people are saying because she was trying to make it look like an accident with her husband. I don't know, you guys. It is absolutely crazy. Well, she is actually under investigation now for a third murder, a third stabbing from somebody that she had worked with prior to both of these people. I mean, it's not said they don't know if she did it or not yet. It's not been proven, but they're thinking that she possibly even murdered somebody else as well. And when you watch the interviews with her, like this is a very intelligent like woman. Like she wanted to be a scientist. Like she worked in like the medical field. She has her master's degree. I mean, this isn't no like dumb, dumb, very, very, very intelligent woman, but it may be also one of those cases where you have so much book smarts. You don't have a whole lot of common sense. I don't know. You guys, this is just wild. And another thing that Pierce Morgan said that creeped him out about this is because this is a woman that seemingly had the perfect childhood, a great life. I mean, you never really know, okay? So many people, like Ted Bundy said he had a perfect childhood, honey. Something, something went wrong there. Something, not saying that it's his parents' fault or his childhood's fault from what he did, but you can have a great childhood, but a per I don't know. May maybe she did, I, but that's what Pierce Morgan said. Pierce Morgan said it's creepy because she seemingly had the, like a perfect childhood, a great family, very, very smart, you know, all of these things made really good money and she felt like her only way out of her situations was to kill people. Like why not just divorce your husband? Oh yeah. And that was the thing. They're saying the reason why she didn't divorce her husband was because of the shame that she got, you know, from their family, from divorcing her first husband, that she couldn't do that again. She could not shame her family again by getting divorced again. So uh, I don't know. Have you guys heard about this situation? When I was researching this, I thought this is again exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about the women in prison because the situation with like, like prison, a lot of people say male's prison is so much worse. I feel like the only person that says male's prison is so much worse are people that have never been inside of a prison. Okay. You just think it's so much worse because it's a lot of fighting and like violence, right? But women in women's prison are very manipulative, vindictive, cunning, sneaky. That is the difference, right? Like this woman snuck and planned all of this stuff down to getting into this man's calendar and getting on a doggone plane, y'all. Like, okay, I understand maybe sitting out in his front yard, peeking in his windows. I mean, I would never do that. I don't understand it. But like, girl, down to the, you're, you're flying on the, like sitting next to him. Oh my gosh. Like you're on the same plane to the same destination as me. Like what a kawinky dink, like creepy. He should have got out then. And men, listen to me. Y'all got to wake up. I love you guys, not all of y'all. But some of y'all are so oblivious. Like, <sighs> y'all are gonna be, <laughs> her brother was coming to visit her that much. He was packing up all of his stuff and moving out of the house. Like how, how, how? Anyways, have you guys heard about this situation? Is this not like a fatal attraction for real? Oh yeah, and there's way more cases than just this one, okay? So <laughs> let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. As always, my loves, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. 
Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust.